Welcome to E-Commerce Deep Dive, a podcast featuring the biggest players in retail and e-commerce. Your host is John Giorso, founder and CEO of Orca Pacific, a Mighty Hive company. For today's episode, John is joined by Jean Christophe, founder and CEO of Born, a new invite-only premium marketplace. The two discuss luxury e-commerce, digital transformation, and Born's vision for the future of luxury e-commerce. As always, thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Jean Christophe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Hello. Absolutely. And uh, and you are uh, it's it's later at night. You're in France. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I'm 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 French. I'm in France. Uh, but I'm an optimist. You know, that's it's important, <laughs> important to say. Uh, yeah, I am in France for the moment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, after spending most of my time on the West Coast in the U.S. Um, with this particular pandemic, I, I had to come back to to France. But I I, I do try to travel uh, given the obligation and restrictions. Sure, sure. Uh, well, that's great. We appreciate you uh, you jumping on, especially later at night. So um, let's start with a, a little bit of background on on you, what you've done. You've had a really interesting journey in in digital and e commerce, uh, and then uh, maybe give us some history, and then tell us about uh, what you're up to today with with Born. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, well, you know, I'm 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 a true entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a true creator. I'm definitely passionate. And as all entrepreneurs, I've, I've listened to uh, some of your great guests, I think determination <laughs> is that they say uh, is, is obviously the most important thing and always loving what we do. And I, and I started that way. Indeed, you know, we had at the time I was in France, we had a, an old tool called the Minitel. Nobody would know, you know what it is really, but it was interesting. It was an 80 colon screen, which everybody in France could have 14 million users. Imagine in the nineties, uh, because the device was provided by France Telecom, the incumbent player, a typical, you know, <laughs> French on its own situation. Yeah. And, um, but it was interesting because as a consequence, I have learned. I was um, an insurance broker online at the time. Uh, marketing was the key. Associating with technology was, of course, a must. And we were basically selling quotes. And when people were actually making their quotes, they could eventually convert in uh, you know, subscribing to an insurance contract. It was a great school. Then, as I had the chance to live in the U.S., uh, on the West Coast in California uh, for several years between 23 and, and 26. I kept some good friends. And as I was doing this insurance brokerage, I could see the emergence of the internet. And, um, and you know, we're talking 94, 95. And um, I looked at it and I felt, gee, I mean, th- this is way stronger and better than our little Minitel, right? As, as, as great as it was from a learning curve, And um, so I started to think, well, what's working? And I realized that at the time, finance, financial services brokerage was starting with players like E-Trade and and, and Datec and and others. And obviously you had the AOL, you had the, uh, you know, internet access providers, but it was really as a service, a transactional, associating a content. It was quite, you know, financial services were fitting pretty much. It was still not broadband so you know things were a little bit time consuming to get things sure. done but quote trade was okay working and then i felt well that's an interesting convergence you know insurance brokerage um uh, stock brokerage we were already having at the time 30 thousand new clients per annum on the insurance side and i really felt well you know John, this was the years, these were the years of the bank insurance everywhere in America, in Europe, there was this merger, you know, happening. And I thought, well, maybe it would be great uh, to combine another service for our existing customer. And I have to say, at the time, there was no VC money, really, you really had to find your way to face your cost of acquisition. I mean, all of the marketeers that are listening to this <laughs> always you know, have a headache with this famous cost of acquisition and ROI. And 
we really had to combine the best formula, uh, you know, to, to do this. And I thought, well, if I am capable to offer a second service, this is way before SaaS platform, you know, you sell a subscription, yeah, you're trying to add another product. This is really where I learned it, John, if I can, if I can say. Then we combined the two. We started with our own initiative. I rapidly realized that maybe there was something smarter to do. How about I go back to America? I go back to my friends in California, and I eventually propose them to develop Europe for them. And that's how I ended up uh, basically among the different meetings I had to team up with E-Trade. And I became basically, uh, you know, E-Trade partner early beginning i have to tell you you know at the time for the little anecdote you know when i saw christos kotsakos the ceo at the time he looked at me and he said what 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 what, what do you want to do i said well i think it would be great to do this in europe so well, we're just starting in the u.s i said well i think you know it would be a good opportunity to do it together I'm making a long story short but this is truly what happened it was a fabulous journey i learned branding i learned marketing i actually learned tech marketing. And I guess this is what I keep used today. This has been part of my training, has been part of a certain passion. The obsession at the time for the people at E-Trade of their brand was quite different, if you want, than most of the tech companies of the Silicon Valley. So I learned there. Um, it was great. We started in different countries. It was, again, fabulous learning curve, how to associate that notion of community content, you need information to trade, the information from your community and information from, you know, professionals. And how to associate that? There was no Facebook at the time, you know, it was quite interesting. And what does it take? It takes you to make a trade. It takes you to transact. So that was an interesting journey. I did the same thing after that with VeriSign. So, you know, if you think about it, my first experience was really about disruption. It was really about the disruption of the financial services, how things can be different and how we can still bring, at the end of the day, a great service to small or big players thanks to the digital transformation. That's really what we worked on. Very sure. sign were the same, but more towards security, of course. Uh, then there was a period of time where, you know, awaiting for broadband to take on was probably um, a period of time where things were a little bit slow. And then suddenly with broadband, as my background, my family comes from, you know, luxury brands and creativity and uh, craftsmanship of beautiful products. My, my great grandmother, it's going to be really far away from the digital space, was the right uh, hand of Christian Dior. So it was always interesting in the family to hear about well, this is technology and yeah. very much intangible. Why don't you do those beautiful products? We do very well in France. You know, there's yeah. a bit of that. But, but I think it was a, a great inspiration, I think, to want to associate the two. But for a long time, it was impossible. Yeah, you, know, you can't luxury do that brand. Product, right? I mean, no, no. It, be, no. It, just, it wasn't, wasn't possible. So, so, no. um, so take us maybe to today what you're up to i think mm -hmm. we now obviously we have very fast internet uh and we're able to do some really interesting creative things uh digitally and as it relates to commerce and 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 creativity and and we were talking a little bit before we hit record here sort of talk to us about that and and, and your journey and how you got there and and how you're well, today. You, you know i i have to say usually you 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 have a strong vision you know, this is probably what most entrepreneurs do. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. But, you know, you, you really start with a strong vision. And I have yeah. to say, probably thanks to what I had experienced, I had a very definitive uh, vision or belief about how premium, not necessarily super high luxury, but how premium contemporary brands would transform their communication and their distribution with a high level of efficiency, uh, you know, in the future. Now, did I know exactly the timing, you know, in all humility? No, absolutely not. But I was really convinced. So 
I looked at um, a few elements, if you want, growing in parallel. Number one, the quality of the device completely changed. The material, the Android or the iPhone 12 or, you know, wherever we are, I mean, we're having an amazing computer in hand with a quality of imagery, a quality of creation within that device itself, which is quite amazing. And obviously the functionalities and the complexity allows so many things. Mostly in the networking effect, mostly in the engagement effect, not just to watch, but to interact. Sure. Then, obviously, a real growth of e-commerce. You know, I was looking at the, uh, and, 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 you know, this, this uh, pandemic era has completely transformed and exploded, but it was already there. You know, you look at a Shopify, yes, it doubled, but it was already 90 billion. You know, um, yeah. Amazon has obviously increased, but it's a significant percentage. Now, you have to look at it. Is it only a percentage of the US e-commerce we're talking about? Is it a percentage of the online business we're talking about? No, we're talking about retail. We're talking about that notion of transformation. So you really have to consider that Amazon is 10%, not 40% of e-commerce in the US, but 10% of retail, really. So you would say there is room, there's still room for the change. Sure. But what I really considered was if an Amazon has made an amazing work to go head to head or to substitute or replace the Costco, the Walmart, all of these, I would say, mainstream mass market. Yeah. I really felt there is a need for something for the people who create beautiful things. Yeah. For the people who have a story to tell. And that's really what I wanted to focus because this is basically my knowledge and expertise. And I do believe that great stories drive commerce of beautiful products. Yeah. And that's really what I wanted to focus on. So the way we, we, we do it, it's, you know, we, we create it with an amazing team, my co-founding partner, Brendan Whitepitch, Pierre Sapin in Europe. We're spread out, you know, we, we, we obviously are in different uh, part of Europe or the US, we really tried to assemble uh, a great knowledge in UI UX, of course, with a very strong involvement in design. We do believe that design technology is a must for that category of brands. We obviously have strong engineering. Engineering for the market network is combining the community, the content, and the marketplace components. It's not just marketplace. It's a bit more complex as an experience, but it delivers the story better and the exchange on the story, of course, to conduct the commerce action. AI, machine learning, of course, because you really want to be able to work more and more on the affinity that will associate brands and buyers. And obviously, on the marketing and sales side, we made a choice. We made the choice to start with a B2B uh, under our B2B brand, which is Alkeon. And it's a very intelligence-driven initiative where we noticed that, and before COVID, I have to say, John, uh, we were already on this intention three years ago when we started to develop on the app or on the desktop, our market network solution, we realized that trade shows, agents, PR, the whole ecosystem, which has one mission, connect people who make beautiful products with the people who love them. You should say who buy them because they're professional buyers. They do need, they, I hope, you know, the trade shows are revived right after this sure. COVID situation because human need humanity, <laughs> humans yeah. need to meet. But I think there is something complementary that can be brought to these trade shows or that overall ecosystem. That's what we have built with Alkea. Got it. So basically it's the, it's the, you know, just to maybe use a specific example here. So, so, um, uh, so our audience understands. So, you know, if a, if a buyer for a, a, a high-end boutique with, you know, five locations was going to a trade show, um, they'd obviously have that experience in person. They'd be able to look at product from, from various uh, brands and, 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 uh, and suppliers. Right. But this is a way to sort of either augment after the fact or in COVID times, probably replace entirely short-term that experience in kind of a digital format. Am I, am I 
uh, you're right, that, John. But you know right that yeah, you, the the way we looked at it because we talk about commerce and we talk about e-commerce in particular. Yeah. What is the origin of a of an act of commerce? It's a beautiful action. Commerce should be a beautiful action. This is when people meet. Someone has made something that someone else really wants to have. That's sure. a good intention, right? Yeah. So in order to make that happen, the first element is about discovery. And I think the solutions that existed were probably more designed or developed towards the last action, the ordering, replacing the pen and the paper in a beautiful way, looking at line sheets, client per client, pretty siloed if you want, but that's the end of the action. Yeah. The real beginning of the action is how do people discover each other? And you know, in a trade show, for example, many trade show, you know, uh, organizers told us, well, that would be great to combine the two to an element where we could even help people to prepare the time they spend at the show. They will know each other better. They will save time. They will immediately go and meet and enjoy. And that's the discovery. So we really worked a lot. And that's why design technology, that's why making an environment that is beautiful is, is key. And that's why we invested so much, probably way more than a typical tech company or e-commerce company. So that's the discovery component. Helps the brand to respect its brand equity, to showcase the product for us, the product is the hero. The brand is a catalyst and the creator is the magician. And that's the way we like it. Maybe it sounds a little bit like a typical French poetry, but you know what? <laughs> Maybe it is <laughs> in, our, in our heart and mind. I, but I like on, the side of the re and on, on the side of the buyer, it's the same experience. And, and you know, we have to remember, we have to be humble. All of the products we're talking about are desirable products. I'm sorry to say, we don't necessarily need it, right? But sure. we desire it. We're yeah. humans, and that's okay. We have the right to desire products. So for the buyer, it's the same experience. And many of them told us, look, it's complicated. We are harrowed, self ridges That's for the biggest. But even for the smaller, we're bombarded by emails every day. It's, it's almost like, for us, the inspiration was, how about we do a Spotify of, you know, uh, design-led lifestyle products? How about there is one place you can see all of those fabulous products? And that's where you need the machine learning and the AI component because it's like your Netflix homepage. It might yeah. not be exactly the same that you have and I have for different reasons. It's the same thing. We need to manage the affinity. So for the buyer... It's a time saver, it's a filtering process, and always in a beautiful environment. We think it's always better when it's beautiful. So we, right. we pay a lot of attention on that. That makes sense. And then uh, the, the, other, uh, the other brand or the other company is basically the B2C kind of version of that. Is that a, well, is that a fair way of yeah, explaining it? Yeah. Or how would, you, how would you explain Born? Right. No, no, you're right, John. I think, I think Born is, is, to be honest with you, in a very... Alkion is our business. Born is our lab. Okay. And, you know, we, we, we're creators ourselves. And this is where we basically, Brendan, Pierre, and all of the rest of our team, we, we like to say, hey, guys, let's dream it. Let's invent. Let's innovate. Let's go further. We have, you know, obviously, like everyone, already a new generation that will be presented pretty soon to all of our partners. And... It's hard, you know, when you go to your typical B2B partners, you, you don't always or they can't always tell you, hey, you know what, do whatever you want. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So we like the idea to do whatever we want under the born, you know, environment. And in order not to be competitive with our partners, that's why we call it B2C. But in fact, it's a real, you know, small initiative it has always been used you know historically for me to create the design-led lifestyle and now purpose-led lifestyle curation we wanted to demonstrate the first thing is we know and as we know we can help 
So we know how it works. We know what is a customer. We know how to operate. We know how to design. We know how to basically create that customer experience. Because right now, as you know, John, because that's, that's the purpose of your uh, show, your podcast and interviews, Look, for digital transformation, there's no plan B. <laughs> you know, people have to be decisive, but yeah. you still need to help them. That's that's yeah. a key component. So 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 that's I think that's a great um, kind of foundation. I, I have a couple of questions. Obviously, you've you've thought a lot about, uh, you know, kind of luxury premium products. And it's something that I think a lot about because um, in my world, I think there's still a lot to be desired Um on Amazon and some of the other platforms when it comes to luxury and, and premium product. It, they are, those products are fundamentally different than, you know, you need to buy a new stapler or you need to buy, uh, you know, a, 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 a mm. rebuy your broccoli or whatever it is. So, um, right. what, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's obvious, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on what is it that in your mind differentiates luxury and the experience that a customer should have with a luxury product versus just a product that maybe is complex and expensive. So take a, a, a new, you know, um, home uh, stereo system, which you could be spending, you know, thousands of dollars on, but it's not necessarily a luxury product. How, how do you differentiate that and the, and the experience the customer should have versus, you know, a, a $2,000 handbag? This is very interesting, John, because we could debate about that. You know, I've, I've, I've been invited on panels on that topic in particular. What is luxury? Yeah. What is luxury for different generation? What is luxury for diversity? What is luxury for humanity? I think the notion of luxury has changed. And to be honest with you, it is not a word we use a lot. That's why we went towards this design-led lifestyle. And I think we, we to address your, your question, which is, which is true, you were talking about the quality of a product rather than its look and price. And how do you distinguish? And if I understand correctly, yes. well, that's exactly what we decided, what I decided to create 10 years ago when I wanted to create that movement. It was very small. We were about quality. It was multi-category, number one, because if you want to pretend design-led lifestyle, you cannot be mono-category. But then you need to create that new notion of luxury as you're you know, asking to define. And we thought it's all about the product. And it's funny because your example was about a product, that great zero system versus, you know, a bag or, you know, some, yeah. something else, right? And we think as product is the hero that there are three components. First, it's functionality. There are no consumers, even though, look, everybody might want to look good. That's, that's human, right? But now we want to look smart. Mm. And we want to be smart. And for that, when you make a purchase, you want to be sure that you have that emotional resonance. That's the, you know, that's the look side, right? It has to resonate emotionally. That's a great pleasure. And why not? This is fabulous. But the next thing is you want the product to be behavioral. You want its functionality to work, whatever is the price. It's a great coffee machine, affordable, or it's something, you know, way more expensive. Same fashion, you want it to work. It's a functionality. And that is a curation. You can't just sell and put something expensive or not expensive on a website or propose to a customer if it doesn't have a proper function. And you know, it's interesting because for spending a lot of my time with great designers, each time I ask them, what is the grail for you? What is really what you want to achieve as a designer? And the best ones, they all come up with the same thing. They say, you know, we don't want to make noise. We don't want to create another product on the shelf. We want to create a product that will enrich its user in its experience. So that's the functionality. Then it's made with integrity. Look, we all know what's happening on the planet today. You can't talk about luxury if it's to destroy the planet. How about, and it's a little bit our why, that's my why, how about we were dedicated to make sure that we create products that are beautiful in all sense? And how could we be 
proposing beautiful product if they don't make a beautiful planet. It doesn't work. I think that's also a definition of the new luxury. And then it's desirability. But the good thing, John, and that's what I love about what we do, desirability is a very personal element. Some yeah. people will like the less is more, the Bahao school, the Japanese spirit. Some others would like something a bit more charged, a bit more stuffy. And, and why not? There is not, you know, there is not a single taste. That's not the point. So that's why the luxury to me is about, or to us at Born, at Alkeon, and for many of the shows we work with, is in the product. That, that's that. And it doesn't, doesn't link to the price. That, that that was a great explanation. Um, so my my follow up to that is so and, that, and sorry, John, sorry, and, and yeah, maybe to your point, and, and sorry, and we think that this was probably not, and it's probably not today, necessarily the point of entry of the giant players, and they do an amazing job. They are facilitated, and they have helped a lot on that distribution for many brands and, and supported a lot of creativity. We think there is a room for those particular products, but they, to our opinion, were not changing the notion of e-commerce. We are just changing the way to do it in a sense that the story, the sourcing, where does that come from? Why those components, why those elements are real? Hey there, I'm Dave Zimmerman with Orca Pacific. I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to let you know this episode is brought to you by Orca Pacific, a Mighty Hive company. We're a full service agency exclusively focused on Amazon with capabilities for everything a brand needs to succeed on the platform. From advertising strategy, content development and SEO, to merchandising and marketing. If it relates to driving and converting demand on the platform, our dedicated teams are leaders in this space. Our robust suite of services includes expertise on the back end as well, from operational support, demand forecasting and planning to the right fulfillment options, and higher level strategies like long-term planning, channel management, and access to beta programs. To learn more, visit our website at www.orcapac.com that's O-R-C-A-P-A-C dot com. And a business development manager will get you up to speed on how we can accelerate your Amazon business. Now, back to the show. I think in a physical space, I think that's been more or less mastered at this point, right? Like we've, yeah, as a society, yeah. we've been working on this for hundreds, arguably thousands of years. Um, right. In a digital environment, I do not think the presentation of luxury has been maximized in terms of what the experience could be where where do you think what is your sort of ideal state for for digitally representing luxury uh knowing that maybe some there's some technology that still needs to progress etc no you, you look i mean we have a lot of things available but uh, it, it's it's a very valid point but to some extent uh with no surprise e-commerce exists for 30 years right? More or less. This is time of Amazon, eBay, you know, I remember I was doing E-Trade you know, at the time. Yeah. So I, I've seen that journey. And th the bet and the play was the volume game. And I was good. And they've done it, look, to get to the point of the number one, 1. 1.5 million employees. No doubt it worked, sure. right? Yeah. And the market price, you know, everything. Yeah. But you're right. It's only 10 years that initiatives on the premium and luxury. You know, there are a lot of great brands that the definition of luxury, again, is always a dangerous zone because in people's mind, when you say, what is a luxury brand? Of course, they will come with Dior, Chanel, Louis sure. Vuitton, Rolex, the most obvious. Even the Rolex is an interesting case because a, a submariner from Rolex is not something unaffordable, yet they completely correspond to the definition I actually shared before. So that's an interesting demonstration. But there are many other brands who are investing in their own brand. Take something, a great brand from America, John Barvetos. Take a brand like Apple. Is Apple a luxury brand in that new definition? Absolutely. They actually work on every single component to be it. It's expensive, yes, but 
you know, it's accessible, put it this yeah. way. Sure. And, and, and they all today need an environment. You said something interesting. You said, wow, we masterized it on the physical side. What did we really masterize? What you have in mind, what you're visualizing is the experience. It's the beauty of the space that we're welcoming you or still welcoming you when you want to go into those products. Of course, that's the game. Of course, it's the quality of the storytelling. Great stories drive commerce for the beautiful product. But you need an environment. So where is going to basically uh, going, to, where is going the progress, if you want? Well, in the environment, but we are starting to see more and more beautiful graphic design wise, you know, beautiful environment. This is a improvement that is happening compared to 10 years, but it will be obviously within the experience. And we work a lot on that. You're right. There will be more AR. They probably, we are thinking of our house of born where we have, you know, we're, we're, we're working on a studio. We're working with our born lab to facilitate for creators, you know, all of the environment that they will need to actually create on site or accompany some of their creations. We are designing very specific interviews that are guided. Look at, for example, the progress that Airbnb made. It was a very interesting thing. At first, anyone could put its accommodation, you know, in, in the overall environment. And then, you know, interestingly enough, Airbnb realized that, wow, maybe we should produce and finance our own video, our own photography, our own architecture. That's a foyer, that's a room, that's the neighborhood. It also goes in the environment. And so that, that's where, the, and, and there is obviously a lot of room. You know, if, you know, uh, we were saying Amazon, as big as it is, is 10% of retail, and that's for the US, you know, Amazon is not in every country in the globe. So there is room. Um, obviously, uh, there they are people that are experts in this. You know, great department stores are also starting to, you know, with the hit they took to, really want to revolutionize the experience they want to deliver on site. They have beautiful sites. Nobody can go there at the moment. That's a problem, but it will reopen, of course. And, and we can extend. And maybe with an extension of choice, it won't be limited by footage. So I think I truly believe in complementarity. But yeah. I agree with you yeah. in, the, in the experience. And that can't be on the same place. You, you can't have... You know, an Amazon competing with Costco and Walmart and all of these parts and, 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 and being the space where you deliver. The, I mean, it, it actually never even happened in a physical space. So why would it stop now? Yeah, I, I think that's actually really interesting. Um, uh, Amazon is, is, is trying to prove you wrong on that. We'll see I know. how successful they're, doing a good job. they're, they're <laughs> able to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree, though, that... that um, the experience in in a digital format has to be sufficiently separated uh, from the sort of the rest of the mass experience to truly be unique, and that's a, that's a tricky thing to pull off. And but, I think uh, you know, and, and and sorry, John. No, go ahead. I also think it's a culture. You know, if you look at the the, the world of media, you take a Condé Nast, you take a Hearst. They have talents. They have had photographers that work with them, uh, copywriters, and they've had you know graphic designers. They've made an amazing work on that understanding of that space, of that culture. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing snobby about it. It's it's just a different you know mindset. Well, and culture. That, comes, that comes back to the storytelling, right? Is 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 absolutely is storytelling is a yeah. component. Um, right. You need those storytellers. There, there are right. still people yeah. that have to create those those narratives. Um, and I don't. I think the digital environment is no different in that respect. Well, you know, and and you know, maybe maybe there is a reason in the in the world today. We should respect that. You are in Seattle with a beautiful photo behind you. It's a beautiful city. Love to go there. City of Microsoft. City of Amazon. Uh, you know, Starbucks and Boeing. I mean, it's an amazing city. But you know what? The Fashion Week is still in Milan, in Paris. Yeah. And the watch industry is in Switzerland. 
and you yes, know, and yes. and the furniture world is in Italy, and uh, even though more and more in the northern countries, and um, in the UK you have other, and that that's great. That's that's where you have pockets of creativity. I think it's always related with the culture and the value chain of the suppliers. That's always worked that way. And we have to respect that and integrate it. That's why I was talking about digitizing an ecosystem and its culture, not just putting an article with a price tag and say, hey, you know where it goes? Most of the time it goes in discount. Is it really helping the brands and the brand culture? No. So we have to find something different. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, I guess before we close out here, John Christoph, um, how do people get a hold of you? How do they get in touch with you? How do they find out more about um, about the companies uh, that, right. uh, that you founded? Well, you know, uh, first of all, we have uh, the, the usual different ways. Uh, we have an amazing marketing and sales team which uh, with our team of uh, industry leaders, category by category, most of them are experts by country or by category. They have an existing relationship with all of the top trade shows, agents, distributors. Uh, we are regularly inviting them in our live stream, which Pierre, uh, one of my co-founding partner, is remarkably you know, entertaining and activating. So people can come and discover and fully understand what do we do and how we do it and why we do it. Uh, we obviously have you know, a team of communication that uh, explains what we do progressively. Um, and we have our partner's channel, if you want. But, you know, without sounding, um, you know, arrogant, uh, we, we, we do have uh, a lot of work <laughs> now. It's, it's progressing uh, pretty well. I think, John, we could say that we make, a, I do actually, I've learned that, you know, with this uh, American experience that I've had with E-Trade and VeriSign, the, the, the customer relationship, you know, you always talk about that a lot in the U.S. That's a culture, you know, very important. Yeah. And, um, and I remember going through the disruption at the time, we really had imagined at a time of E-Trade, we had to sell the consumer the idea that he buys a computer, that he goes through an internet access, you know, uh, a subscription, and he has to put his money in the computer. So... We, we, are, we have been trained over the years to a company. And I say our two big things uh, to concur and satisfy are our design studio, our capacity to really make our partner look beautiful and the experience respectful of their own brands, the brands, obviously, of their clients. That's important. And we really pay attention not to be one of those email hotline, phone number where it's hard to have someone and be too much of a tech company. So we do have a great tech team, but we really give a lot of a human touch and a company because we know we've experienced that. Um, a digital transformation, a disruption is work. <laughs> That's what I would like to say. A lot of work to a company. I, I agree with that. Well, um, John Christoph, this has been great. Appreciate you uh, being on the show. Thank you, John. Um, Thank yeah, you. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.